And there's two ways to do part two. Part uh, the, the regular way, elbow medial to the PSIS, lift the leg, let the leg go, bring the leg across, thrust, thrust, thrust. The easy way is to stand opposite the side of involvement, lift the leg, let it go, thrust, thrust, thrust. It's the same segmental contact point, same line of drive. It's just that I'm holding the leg up with this hand instead of this one. They don't cross the leg anymore? I cross the leg over. No, I mean, that's for a safer right. apex left or right. Oh. Okay. So that's the negative deer field adjustment prone. Turn face up, please. It can also be done supine. Part one supine. Let's say the negative deer field was on this side. Bend the knee. I'm in a fencer stance, the leg comes out, I stabilize over the ASIS, I contact the medial ischial tube with this part of my hand, get the elbow down, thrust I to S, medial to lateral towards this shoulder, and thrust A to P with this hand. Part one, part two, stabilize on this knee, Straddle the ASIS between the index and middle fingers. Thrust A to P and torque fingertips away from the middle. So on the left, it will be clockwise. If I was on the right, it would be counterclockwise. Okay? A lot of people know their Thompson, but they don't know the Sapan. Which one do you prefer to ever do it? You actually do an AI signal. Which one is Jerry Hartman? Um, what do you on the spot? I usually do prone uh, because the patient's already prone. Is there any particular stipulation that you you want to do with this one to find? Yes. Prone is not holding because of the instability of the patient. Try it supine because in the supine position, the sacrum and the pelvis will and the ilium will stabilize. In the prone position, they'll destabilize. So if you have a very unstable patient, supine will always work better. But you wouldn't know it until they until they're not holding. Yeah. So you're going to try it supine. Okay. And actually, the best answer to your question is I rarely do this move. Right. Because in my analysis, I determine what's worse, anterior or inferior. And that's what I adjust, and I usually do it prone drop or side posture. So I, I got the idea from Thompson, but my correction is totally different, and my verification is not Thompson-based. But, but I, do, I do still use this move, but I hardly ever do it supine. I usually do it prone. And it usually worked. Okay? Can you do the sacrum, the sacral analysis? The, um... Sacral apex? Yeah. Sure. Lie face down. Sacral apex left and right is analyzed independent of everything. It's not even based on leg checks. So what you do is you stabilize the sacrum, press it towards the table, keep this leg straight, raise it as high as you can, mark how high it comes up, put the leg down, do the other side please, and mark how high that came up. Let's say this one came up noticeably higher. It didn't, but let's say it did. I would cross this leg over the back of this leg. And ideally at the knee, and then we take this side of the pelvis and lift it up like that. This is a, I'm setting her up for a sacral apex right. Sacrum's done this. Right, yeah. Now, the base of the sacrum has jammed up against the superior ilium here. So I just pulled the superior ilium away by crossing this leg over. Now, I find the apex, put my superior or right hand on the right sacral apex, place my left hand against the right PSIS, get the elbows down, thrust, 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 and then redo the test. This is a very important move. I think I have a right to go with that. <laughs> if the right is high, if the, horn, if the high one is right, 
the sacral apex right. Stand on the right. Contact the apex on the right with your right hand. And stand and contact the PSIS on the right. I love it. How's with that? your left hand. Break the rest a little bit. You know, I mean, we do what we can. Just, you know, that, that is the sacral apex right. Okay. Okay. Uh, what were the other ones? Did you just iron in here? Did you? Are we wearing the same shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Super similar. similar. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have that as a Thompson Club shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, the varieties of the Okay, so we get negative. Um, uh, the PI is just opposite. Yeah. Ah, the PI ilium prone. If she had a PI ilium here, she'd have a, negative, a positive deer field here with leg lag. Mm -hmm. I would stabilize the right ischium with my right fist, contact the left PSIS, thrust I to S, P to A. Just with this hand, table drops, boom, boom. And that's on the, for the left? Left, the left PI. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm standing on the right. This gives me some medial to lateral, I to S and P to A. Can you do that again, Doc? Just one, one more time. The PI, PI on the left, mm -hmm. stabilize the right ischium, contact the left PSIS, Thrust, 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 thrust. So that cross move is no longer. Are you talking about like? You're talking about the supine way to adjust a PI, I think. Could be. Okay. This is the way it was done back in Thompson's day. Still is. I don't know what you're talking about. That's probably the day you were in the back of the room with that bottle of whiskey. <laughs> I remember that day. <laughs> Can you um, do I and the EX real quick? The I and the EX setups. Yeah. Okay, lie face up. The I and the EX setups. I would have the sacral blocker in the pelvic piece. Mm -hmm. If she had an I and ilium here, I'd have her bend her knee here. I would remove the I and by doing this, but I would hold the ASIS on the table and thrust A to P through the ASIS while the SI joint is held open. Okay. Okay. If she had an EX, I would, let's say she had an EX here, I would say fold this leg over this leg, bend the knee, there you go, let the knee drop down. She's just helped fix her own EX, and I'm going to help her a little bit more by stabilizing the left ASIS, contacting the right ASIS, and thrusting A to P and medial to lateral. How should the table be? Should it just go straight, straight down? down? Okay. And ideally, I would have her on the pelvic piece, but if, if she's on pelvic and lumbar, it can be on both. Okay? For the IN fixation, what's the segmental contact point? IN? Mm -hmm. It's really sort of hard to tell you the segmental contact point because there is none. It's a, it's a stress it out here. Mm -hmm. I guess it would have to be the ASIS here. Yeah. Okay? When you're doing an IN side posture, the segmental contact is the medial aspect of the PSIS. But we're not even on the back of the patient. So we're putting the patient into a position to open up the IN and just thrusting A to P and getting the table to try. Mm -hmm. We did a move that was kind of like a toggle move. But I can't Posterior rock ischium. No, 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 no. It was actually like... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the tunnel. Yeah, it was the tunnel. That oh, it was, was the tunnel. cervical syndrome atlas, no tender nodule. Okay. That was a tunnel. That was a tunnel. So yeah. how will you differentiate between being behind the patient and being in front of the patient? Well, if I'm too short to do it from in front, I'll do it from behind. Okay, but I mean like fast. Oh, it'll be... It'll say. Okay. Toggle, you know, I, I'll just say left cervical syndrome, no tender nodule. I want to see the setup. I don't care if you do it from in front or behind. I gotcha. okay. but you know, the right side of the pain, the correct side has to be up. Mm -hmm. so, so it's more important to me that when you get the information that ought to lead you to where you want to go, that that's where you go. Mm -hmm. Your exact technique is not as important to me as it is. can you think about the analysis. That's what's important to me. Can I see that? Mm -hmm. Top. Sure, why are you sliding this in that way? You don't want it. So you said that there was a left 
cervical okay, so well, your there's left, a side be left cervical syndrome, no tender nodule will be a right atlas. Okay. So right side up. Right side up. And it'd be a right posterior atlas. So if I was to do this from in front, I'd stand down here. I'd have her in the toggle position, bend both knees, please. Okay? I'd be here. I would do my setup, P to A, S to I, tissue pump. Setup. Stabilization. Boom. P to A, S to I, L to M. Um, if I want to do it from behind, just to illustrate, why don't you turn away? This will be a right cervical syndrome, no tender nodule. Um, I would have this tilted down. Okay. Tissue pull, contact, contact, and here I can stand slightly superior and do a regular toggle. Boom. That's just that's the like, yeah. So no. flip over. I face down. Oh no, that's another one that's you were talking about. The bilateral. Oh, that's the cervical syndrome. She's bound. Oh, maybe it's the exterior field. The exterior field. That's just a cervical syndrome. So okay. let's say that she has a short leg. Let's say she's balanced here, but when I bring the leg up, let's say she has a short leg. Um, turn your head to the left, please. Oh look, the leg's balanced. <laughs> But that didn't happen with the legs extended. Because I didn't even ask her to turn her head with the legs extended because she was balanced. Mm -hmm. But when I brought it up, look at short leg, and when she turns left, look, they balance. That's a left cervical syndrome, but I found it in this position. So we give it a different name. But you would still come up on the right to look for the nodule. Yeah, so I still look for a tender nodule okay. on the right. And let's say I find one, so it's a C2 or 3. Uh, it would be a left exterior field, C2 or 3. Is that the hidden cervical syndrome? You can call it a hidden cervical syndrome. Um, it's traditionally called an exterior field because you found it when you crossed the legs over. If, let's say there's no tender nodule. What is it? Atlas. Atlas. It's a left, cervical left exterior field cervical syndrome, C1. What would the listing be? RP. Because it's only posterior atlases that give cervical syndromes. You'll never get a cervical syndrome from an, from an anterior atlas. So Thompson practitioners will very often not find anterior atlases. It just won't show up. So the Thompson practitioner has to know how to find anterior atlases, sort of independent of the technique. So now say you did that and then you felt there were multiple nodules. Ah, so we have, uh, let's say, a left cervical syndrome overcompensated. Mm -hmm. That's also called a right first rib. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, where do you contact? Well, you don't contact the, the neck. Because when you palpate, you'll find C2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You contact the patient's face down. Contact just behind the clavicle over the first rib. This is my hand position on her. Her traps are in here. Her first rib is down here. The clavicle is here. I'm posterior to the clavicle over the first rib. She doesn't turn her head away. What she does is lifts her head, and I take it and bring it over to me. I get S to I and I to S. Thrust, thrust, thrust. I to S on the headpiece, S to I into the dorsals. I want the headpiece and the dorsals to both drop. That's an overcompensated correction. And it's, it's one of the great moves at Thompson. That, the bilateral cervical syndrome, and the sacral apex left and right, are the three moves that are most dramatic for changing the mechanics of the patient in the whole technique. Sacral apex left and right because nobody else does it. Overcompensated is because hardly anybody does it. And the bilateral cervical syndrome because it's a move used 
with a variety of cervical problems that corrects them all. Okay? Can you show the setup for the bilateral cervical syndrome? Sure. She starts off balanced. She turns left, she gets a left short leg. She turns right, she gets a right short leg. I tilt the headpiece down all the way. She tucks her chin in all the way. I have to get the hair out of the way. Double thenar contact, back of the head, get the elbows together, get the elbows down, thrust INS, and come up to the ceiling. Boom! Fast. Do you make sound when you do that? <laughs> <laughs> because some practitioners, like Dr. Mearsman, when he, yeah. he had this, yeah. oh. Oh, you know, he, he started like a <laughs> boom! Yeah. Yeah. That's how you get it. That's when you yeah. charge a lot of money. Is that right? So if I make a sound, I can charge more. Well, how do you do it? 350 Huh? But the sound? There probably is. How to make a sound, that's a 391-6-0.7. That's $2. Anything else? Which one? Which one? Which one? The posterior rock issue? Oh, posterior rock. Oh, posterior rock ischium is this, gastroc pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Posterior ischium, contact, contact. And then, oh. and that's when we do. Mm -hmm. Some people do a, a, a rocking thing. If you want to do a rocking thing, rock your leg. It's just the eggs. Yeah. Know. But it's just boom, boom, boom. Okay. Um, may you please go over that AI sacrum once more? The negative deer field, AI sacrum. Prone, it looks like this, part one. Thrust, thrust, thrust. Part two, lift this leg, let it go, bring the leg across, thrust, thrust, thrust. Very difficult. Mm -hmm. Part two, the easy way is lift that leg, please. Bring it across, thrust, thrust, thrust. Mm -hmm. That's prone. Okay? Mm -hmm. Lie face up. I'll just demonstrate it on this side. Part one, supine. Thrust, thrust, thrust. Part two, thrust, thrust, thrust. Thank you. Okay. And was that an AI sacrum on the? On this side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. On whatever side I'm working, that's where right. the AI sacrum is. Okay. Okay. That's the same. Positive That's the positive oh. I think he went over there.